Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we are talking about the relative pronoun. And you can find the relative pronoun in your books on page 200. Okay, so the relative pronoun. Uh, the relative pronoun relates back to another word in the sentence. Okay, and that other word in the sentence is called the antecedent. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of this in English before we start to look at the Latin. Okay. Uh, Okay, so that boy, who is my friend, is named Marcus. So in this sentence, uh, the relative pronoun is who. Okay, who is the relative pronoun? Um, the relative pronoun's translations are basically who, which, or that. Which and that meaning the exact same thing. I'll explain that in a minute. So the boy who is my friend is named Marcus. Who is the relative pronoun? I'll just abbreviate it as RP. Now, what is the relative pronoun referring to? What's it describing? What's it talking about in the sentence? Well, it's talking about the boy, right? And so the boy is what we call the antecedent. I'll just label that AC. Okay, so it's written right here, the antecedent. The antecedent is the thing that goes before the relative pronoun. It's the word in the sentence which the relative pronoun refers to. And antecedent, if we break this word down, uh, it comes from ante, before, and cato, to move or go. And so, literally, the antecedent goes before the relative pronoun. Okay, so now that we have that basic uh, explanation of what a relative pronoun is and what an antecedent is, let's look at the, the forms of the relative pronoun. Okay, and we'll start with the singular forms. Okay, we're going to set up all five cases. And we are going to also have masculine and feminine and neuter forms. Okay. Masculine, feminine, and neuter. Okay, so the forms of the relative pronoun are qui, quae, quad. It's a short O, so a, awesome, quad. Uh, genitive is cuius, Cuius, cuius. So think of Hickey Coke, right? Cuius, 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 or ile, ilius, ilius, ilius. So it has the I U S. And remember, I mentioned that that's called the pronoun declension. We'll see that a lot. And then the dative, qui. So qui. Some people pronounce this cui. I pronounce it qui. So qui, qui, qui. Uh, accusative quem, quam, quad, and then ablative quo, qua, quo. Okay, so qui, qui, quad, quius, 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 qui, 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 quem, quam, quad, and quo, qua, quo. That's the singular. And now let's look at the plural. 
Okay, so again, setting up the five cases. And masculine, feminine, and neuter. Okay, so in the plural, it's qui, quai, quai, feminine plural and neuter plural, the same form. And then in the genitive, quorum, quorum, quorum. In the dative, quibus, quibus, quibus. In the accusative, quos, quos, quai, because accusative and nominative are the same in neuter. And then ablative, same as dative, quibus, quibus, and quibus. Okay, so qui, quai, quai, quorum, 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 quibus, 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 quos, quas, quai, quibus, quibus, quibus. And just looking at these forms, you can see that the genitive looks like uh, first and second declension, and so does the accusative, and the dative and ablative look like third declension, right? Ibus endings. Okay. So those are the forms of the relative pronoun. And now I'm going to do what I call uh, the relative pronoun cheat sheet. It's really not a cheat sheet, but it's just a helpful way to remember how to translate the relative pronoun. Okay. All right, if you, if you remember this, uh, you'll become very good at translating relative pronouns. So if you see a relative pronoun in the nominative, and apparently my dog Eeyore really agrees with that. Um, so in the nominative, translated as who. If you see a genitive, whose. A dative, to or for whom. Okay, an accusative, whom, and an ablative, we would say by, with, or from, whom. Okay, so if you remember that, it'll really, really help you. Keep in mind that when we're talking about relative pronouns, we use who or whom to refer to a person. Um, so if we're using relative pronouns, who or whom refers to people and which or that refers to things. Okay. That's, that's how we use those in English. So, for example, um, Cornelia is a girl who loves flowers. Okay, so who is the relative pronoun? Uh, Cornelia is the antecedent, right? And who is referring to a person? Okay. Um, the book which I am holding is large. Okay, so which is the relative pronoun and book is the antecedent, but in English, book is a thing, and so we would translate it with which as a relative pronoun. Okay, so just remember who or whom refers to people, and which refers to things. Okay, now I'm going to go through an example of, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a sentence with uh, each type of relative pronoun in all five cases. Okay, and we're going to do this in Latin. So we're going to start with nominative. Okay. 
Um, Oops, forgot the verb. Let's do that again. Okay, so, sorry everybody, so nominative. Okay. Okay, so puella quae per viam ambulat estumea soror. So in, we actually have a sentence that has two clauses. Uh, the first clause is the main clause, puella estumea soror. That's the main clause. And the second clause, quae per, oops, quae per viam ambulat, that is the relative clause. And it's the relative clause because it contains the relative pronoun. Okay, quae is the relative pronoun, and puella is the antecedent. All right, and so if we translate this sentence, which I'll do uh, up top here, so the girl who uh, is walking through the road is my sister. Okay, so one thing that we have to know about relative pronouns is that they agree with the antecedent in gender and number. Okay, the relative pronoun agrees with the antecedent in gender and number. So relative pronoun and antecedent. Okay, so normally an adjective agrees with its noun in gender, number, and case, right? Uh, here, quae is nominative and puella is nominative, but that's just a coincidence. Uh, the relative pronoun does not always agree with its antecedent in its case. Uh, the case of a relative pronoun is determined by its use in the relative clause. And so here, quae is used as the subject of the relative clause, right? It's the subject of the verb ambulat, okay? But I'm going to flip this and turn it into turn it into a, an accusative example sentence to illustrate this difference. Okay. All right, so puella quam in via video est mea soror. So if I translate this sentence, it would be the girl, and this is accusative, so remember we translate accusative as whom. Whom, the difference between who and whom in English is that who is a subject and whom is a direct object. Uh, we tend to not use whom as much anymore in English but it is the correct form of the, of the direct object for the relative pronoun. So the girl whom I see, Wideo, in the road is my sister. Okay, so our relative pronoun is quam, but our antecedent is still puella. 
And so Puella and Quam are both feminine, and they're both, uh, the number is singular, right? So they agree in gender and number. They have the same gender and they have the same number. But the case of the relative pronoun is accusative. The case of the antecedent is nominative. So they don't always agree in their case. If they do, it's a coincidence. So the relative pronoun agrees with its antecedent in gender and number, but its case is determined by how it's used in its own clause, the relative clause. So the, in the relative clause, quam is the direct object. It's the direct object of widow, right, I see, whom I see. And so it has to be accusative here. Okay, let's do just a quick genitive and a quick date of an ablative example. Okay, genitive. Okay, so poetai quorum verba audio sunt boni. And if we translate this, the poets whose, remember genitive, the best way to translate genitive is whose, whose words I hear are good. Sunt boni. Okay, so the relative pronoun uh, is whose, or quorum, and the antecedent is poetai. Okay, the gender is masculine, the number is plural, but the case of the relative pronoun is genitive, and the case of the antecedent is nominative. So the case is determined by how the relative pronoun is used in its own relative clause. And here it's used as a genitive of possession. Uh, the words, whose words, the words of whom. Okay, let's look at a dative example. Okay. Okay, so puer quit librum dedi erat publius nomine. So the boy to whom, right, dative, to whom I gave the book was named Publius, or you could say was Publius in name, right? It's an ablative of respect. It's Publius in respect to his name. Okay, so uh, qui is the relative pronoun, who is the antecedent, uh, the gender for both of these is masculine, the number is singular, but qui is dative because in the clause, in the relative clause, it's the indirect object, right? Librum is the direct object, Dedi is the subject verb, and then puer is nominative because it's the subject of the main clause, right? So the main clause here is puer erat publius nomine, and the relative clause is qui librum dedi. Okay, let's do an ablative example.
Okay, so Puerai, quibus cum ambulas sunt pocerimai. Notice that we used cum as an enclitic, and that happens with the relative pronoun, just like it does with personal pronouns, with me and te and nobis and wobis. So with quibus and with the singular forms quo and qua, you attach cum to the end if it's an ablative of accompaniment. And if we're translating this sentence, uh, the girls with whom ambulas you walk sunt are hokeramai. Very beautiful. Okay, so quibus cum, or just quibus really, is our relative pronoun. Uh, puellae is the antecedent. Uh, the gender is both feminine. The number is plural. Uh, quibus, however, is ablative because it's being used in the clause as an ablative of accompaniment, and puellae is nominative because it's the subject of the main clause, puellae sent pokerimai. Okay, and we'll be practicing with these a lot, um, and thanks for tuning in, everybody, and see you next time.